The two keys that we see again and again to surviving a carjacking are awareness to see it coming and a ready counter ambush. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Brazil. We're gonna see a carjacking go down here today that is a picture-perfect reminder to us of the biggest principles for surviving a carjacking. We're gonna see a victim here who is aware of what's going on around her and she has a ready ambush to get rid of these carjackers who mean her harm. The lady sitting in the car here is our victim and we can see here that we have some bad guys. Now it's not the people in the car that are going but you're gonna see them walk up the sidewalk here pretty quick and she's just sitting here and I'm not sure why but you notice she waits. You can just barely see that her door had opened a second there and then she decides not to come out of the car and now we're gonna find out why because these guys come across the street at her and then when one opens the door they didn't know that they had an off-duty officer here and she shoots that first one and they start scattering and now she's gonna take aggressive follow-up actions make sure that there's no more threats around and this one is over just that fast. Now, at the end here, I wanna back up and learn some lessons. Number one, we see these bad guys coming and you notice that she, for whatever reason, sees them. And situational awareness is your best friend, especially in transitional spaces like your car is when it stops. And for whatever reason, she starts to get out of the car, but you can see the door open and then shut again. And she decides at that point to stay in the car. Now, why didn't she just drive off at this point? I'm not 100% sure. You could maybe say that you don't know that those people meant you harm. They could just be walking by, but you know, they made her creep alarm go off. So she decides to stay in the car. That was wise. But one of the things I would say here is that if she did have a creep alarm going off, leave the car in drive and the door shut so that when you see that guy coming across, you can hit the accelerator and get out of the danger zone. She might not have been able to do that because she had to protect the other person standing on the sidewalk, though I don't have the details to know. Next, when this guy opens the door, you know he means no good. There's four bad guys here, and so she's absolutely justified to shoot, draw that gun, and drive it out there and do what you got to do. But you got to get some practice in the car because it's harder than you think it is. And then once she puts the first shot on target on that first guy, you notice that the other ones scatter. That's a very common thing that we see that bad guys are looking for, not for fights, but for victims. And so once you shoot that first one, you gain the upper hand. The first person who puts shots on target really, really does. Now, when you're following up there, you notice that she goes and grabs her bag and now she only has one hand on the gun. Train and practice to, to either leave that bag alone until the threat's completely gone, or at the very least, get both hands back on the gun for recoil control and for aiming. You do notice here that she's able to look over her shoulder because that one guy went left instead of right, and so you want to make sure that you break focus so that you see where there are any additional threats are. She did an excellent job of that, and now following up to make sure that those threats don't come back. In an overall sense, this off-duty officer did a fantastic job. She protected herself and everyone around her and covered her asp.